Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Medikin. Next on public participation is Mike Samard. Mikey! Please you know come up, state your name and address. I know why he's not working tonight. Good evening, Council. My name is Sergeant Mike Samard, 18 Arrowwood Street, here in Methuen. Been a resident of, uh, for 20 years in Methuen, and uh, recently five years in Arrowwood. Um, the reason I'm here is, is twofold. Um, this project is trying to bypass uh, the historic designation, which is why we're here tonight, and also the zoning, which I think is more important at this point. Because if we're all able to do what this project wants to do, we would have um, clusters everywhere. I sent an email to the council, except Ms. Canan, because we have yet another um, conflict of interest in this city government, which is, is crazy. Everywhere you turn, is, there's a conflict, and it's got to end somewhere. The next council, the next mayor, I hope, does not have any more conflicts because this is getting um, uh, discouraging. Um, I sent the email. For those who responded, I appreciate that for being professional and responding to my email. I took a lot of time in laying out the facts of this case. Some of you are no, new and don't know the backdrop to this, so I'm going to kind of state some facts so you can kind of hopefully um, use that to, to um, help decide on this project. The Sweetheart Inn at 80 Myrtle Street is a designated rural residential area in the west end of the city, which is RR. According to the table of dimensional regulations of the town comprehensive zoning ordinance, lots in this area must be 80,000 square feet. 80 Myrtle Street sits on four acres, or approximately twice the 80,000 square feet, which would allow them two homes if we were to tear down and build a house. If we don't preserve the historic, he can tear it down. He should be able to build two homes. And we don't mind that. Stick to the zone like everyone else, because I couldn't put five homes on my two acres, but he, the mayor's going to give him 13. The initial project proposed by the builder, of Colchester Properties, Wayne Capilupo of Salisbury, called for 15 homes at approximately 5,000 square feet each, when it should be 80,000 square feet. Colchester Properties explored a loophole outlined and added in section B1D of the Table of Dimensional Regulations in 2008, which allows a builder to apply for a special permit if using low impact development techniques. What is that? There's a lot of guidelines to that which they have not adhered to whatsoever. The city of McDonald removed this loophole of LID techniques in 2015 after the CDB board publicly admitted that it was an error when it was added initially. During the seven years that this was in the, the um, ordinances, it was never used by any builder. No zero project ever proposed before the Community Development Board. Colchester property is proposed as planned, plan before that paragraph was rescinded in July of 2015, shortly after it was taken out. How they know about that loophole? Well, I'm going to tell you. In August 12, 2015, the Community Development Meeting, Chairman Joseph Leone paraphrased that the board cannot act on a plan by Colchester Properties that does not meet zoning. In the fall of 2015, Colchester Properties resubmits plans to meet zoning requirements based on a recent definitive subdivision review done by the city engineer and independent engineering firm, tech, engineering firm TEC, which was hired by the city. The city review in letters dated January 5th and 7th in 2016 cited 46 discrepancies using those LID techniques, low impact development techniques, and TEC noted 27, which are similar, I'm sure, to some of the 46 discrepancies. The CDB denies this project yet again, prompting Colchester Properties to file suit in Mass Land Court, which they did. The crux of the lawsuit hinges on that one paragraph, low impact development techniques, the provisions, which were rescinded by the city, and they publicly admitted that was an error that they even put that in there. The Community Development Board consists of six members that include an engineer and three attorneys, and one of the attorneys specialized in a land court dispute, so they did the homework on this one. At the April 11, 2018 Community Development Board meeting, Major Drugas sends Paul Fahey to advise him that he is settling a lawsuit with Colchester Properties. This is right when he took office, because I, the first day he addressed the new council in January, I took him out there because Mr. Fahey 
would not let me speak to him because of ongoing litigation. I pulled the mayor aside and he says, oh, I can't afford this. We've got to pull this project. It was already a done deal, and he knew it. It was $63,000 they were, they were into it. And when he pulled it, there was probably about $7,000 left in litigation. So that was not a very good fiscal uh, move by the city, especially knowing that we were probably going to win this because the CDB did their homework on that. Fahey states that the mayor cannot order the board to do anything, but he didn't want to transmit it to the board that it would be his position moving forward that he would only fund legal expenses related to the cost of the settlement of the case, not for continuing to pursue the case in court. Community Development Director Bill Buckley does not attend this important meeting because of a conflict of interest, refusing to submit to the publicly motivated pressure by the Druga. Three board members abruptly resigned. And I asked the city council, has anyone spoken to those members for the reasons why they resigned. I don't know, and I hope you did, and I hope you did your homework, because it's very important. The Methuen Historical Commission proposes that 80 Myrtle Street, also known as the Thomas Dow House, be paid a historic project. Placing the property within Methuen's historic district, Searles, Tenney, and Evans District, will allow Methuen to save this historic Dow House from demolition, which I believe I saw a guy out there yesterday um, measuring. I think they're going to start uh, dem demoing the building shortly. They, did, they pulled the permit six months ago, and that's all they have to wait is six months. So everything's in line for, for this project because it was I knew it was going to be approved, and they knew it was going to be approved probably years ago, as soon as you Druga took office, and that's what it appears to do. Let's go over the conflicts of interest. Maybe Druga has been a very close friend of Mike Conner for over 30 years, and that's okay. But yet another conflict of interest that the city should set aside and say, no more, we've had enough. He's also been a very close friend of the developer, Wayne Capalupa, who owns SPS, he owns the Seagrass, he owns the other restaurant next to it, and he's part of that whole Salisbury revitalization. The man has property in Salisbury, we all know that. I'm not implying that there's a deal there, but who knows? They also donated uh, generously to the campaign of uh, Jujuga. Mayor Jujuga also served on the Greater Havel Chamber of Commerce with Mr. Capalupo for many years uh, in Havel. And before the mayor agrees to 13 houses, Mike Condon publicly boasts that he's building 13 homes. He was bragging up in his man cave up there saying that, yep, I got 13 homes coming when the project was for 15. So obviously there was collusion between him and Jajuga because 13 is the, the number that the mayor put out. Methuen Community Developer uh, Director Bill Buckley was once the Director of D Development at Capital Group owned SPS. So our Community Development Board Director Bill Buckley once was his Community Development uh, Director at SPS. And at the time this loophole was, was um, exploited, he was a paid consultant for SPS. Wow. Another conflict that just reeks, like we said, of corruption. Wow. Well, corruption is very hard to prove as we know it, but we all know what corruption is. Wow. Go get him, Mikey. And again, we have the city council president who has to recuse herself because she's involved in this, I, what I feel is an unscrupulous land deal. This project has faced opposition from the start. The city engineer, independent engineering firm TEC, noted over 50 discrepancies on this project. None have been resolved. They're just going to tear down that building and they're going to build their 13 homes because that's what they want to do. Mayor Zani said that, uh, not, not Mayor Zani, but uh, Mr. Faye said that the mayor used due diligence in, in allowing 13 homes. What diligence did he use? And he even asked that, Mr. Angeloni asked that. What diligence did you use? He didn't say anything. And he hasn't used anything. What, what could he possibly say? Like I said, the city spent $63,000 to litigate this. It was almost done. The CDB did their homework, they knew they were going to win, and the mayor did too, so he had a vote at the 11th hour, which he did. And again, we're not, we don't care if Mike Condon wants to build two homes according to zoning and make $10 million, we don't mind. But we want him to follow the same zoning ordinances that we do, and the same historic designations that we do. And again, Mike Condon knew of this historical importance when he, when he bought it. Um, he used, it used to be called the Historic Sweetheart Inn, now it's Mike Sweetheart Inn. It's ridiculous. He flip flops because he just wants to make money. He lives down the beach now. He wants out. I'm very proud of the Community Development Board and the staff, minus Buckley, of course, for all the hard work and professionalism throughout this tumultuous ordeal for my family and many others in the West End. 
They did their homework and they got it right. They fought a battle, they knew they would win. The mayor, however, squashed all their hard work and undermined their expertise, expertise and diligence by doing his Salisbury buddy a favor in approving this far-fetched project. And do you think Jujuga approved this to be fiscally responsible? I don't think so. He did it for his buddies, Mike Condon and Wayne Capilupo. Jujuga doesn't care who he betrays now, whether it be the CDB or the city council. He knows he's not getting reelected. He knows that. It's been a circus, and he's so in over his head, he knows it. He's all in at this point, and he doesn't care. He wants to take care of himself and his kid, and it's obvious, and it's disgusting. It's old school politics. And I, I, I know um, Councilor Saber and, and uh, Councilor McCarty and Councilor Campione, I guess you're the only three that we're, we're having trouble reaching, but if you don't approve this, that means he gets to build 13 homes where it's zoning calls for two homes. So think of it twofold, not just the historic part, which is very important, but also all the variances and all the easements that he needs, it, it hasn't been overcome. So we have to think that too when we, when we vote here. We can't let this mayor do what he's been doing, and, and, and city politics have been doing, quite frankly, has been a, the laughing stock of Massachusetts, and it's, it's sickening. And I hope that we restore the public faith in city government and do the right thing for the citizens and not for a select few. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Smart.